surface area of a right pyramid with a regular polygon base. And now we're going to have a big formula for this. Up till now when we've been doing surface area, what have we been doing? We've been just adding up all the sides. Well, this formula is that idea as well. On the bottom, there is a shape. In this case, in the diagram, it's a hexagon. So if I color code that, may as well break out the crayons early today. Uh, yeah. Would you agree that that's the base? Yes. Yes. Sure. Well, did you ever in your coloring skills or your coloring career do the coloring where you made it extra dark around the edges? This is what this is how grade seven map coloring for me worked. We just had to color maps in grade seven for like seven months. That's all it seemed like we did. And you learn the technique of making it dark around and then shading it light. Oh, such good memories. Okay, so there's our base. That comes into our formula right here. That makes sense. And then what we did before is purple. We figured out a side. In this case, each of these sides are triangles, right? In a pyramid. And you would figure out one of those sides, and then say, oh, in this case, I have six triangles that are all the same. Now, the area for a triangle is, and I'm going to write it this time like this, 1 half base times height. Sometimes I've written as base times height divided by 2. This time I'm going to write it as 1 half base times height. You're good with that with the triangle, right? And in this case, our height of that triangle is the slant height of the pyramid. What this formula does is it puts together all six, in this case, all six of the triangles together in one. And it does that by instead of just using the base of one triangle, it uses the base of all of them. Because if I took all six of those triangles and drew them in a row, this would be the base of one of them, the base of the other one, the base of the, the base, the base, the base, the base. Right? And the area of one of these triangles is one half base times the height. And the area of the next one is one half base times the height. And the area of the next one is one half base times the height. And what they've done here is they said, we can put all of those together by just adding up all of these bases and doing one half base times height with all of them together. So that's why they have the perimeter of the base there. And since the actual height of those triangles, every single one of them is the slant height, that's why they have an S there. Check on your formula sheet. Is this formula on your formula sheet? Is it? I don't see it on there. Okay. I'll have to check. It might be one of the ones that has gotten added. Surface area, sphere, cone, cylinder. I don't see the surface area of a pyramid on there. So I'm going to check. I'm going to check if that is one that's been added on there or not. Yes? And you don't have the formula sheet. So I will get you that. So 
So we have, it says use the formula to calculate the lateral area of the shape above if the slant height is 12 and the hexagon, the side of the hexagon is 5. So we go back to the shape above and we say we know that this slant height, does it say slant height? I already forgot the numbers. Are the 5 and 12? Yeah. Excellent. So the slant height is 12 and the side length is 5. Some key thing in here is that it's asking us for the lateral area. Remember, lateral area is without the base. And we talked about painted pyramids and where that might be a good idea in last class. So the formula that we had above says surface, beautiful, surface area equals one half slant height times perimeter plus the area of the base. That's our surface area formula. So if I wanted to figure out my lateral area formula, what do I take away? The area of the base. The area of the base. Which is good, because probably right before this you were thinking, how do I find the area of a hexagon? Do I have a formula for that? You could split it into triangles, maybe. You could figure out a way, but it's not a formula that you have, like, oh, area of a hexagon, blah, 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 blah. Right? It's not a formula you know. So our lateral area, while this is nice, we don't need the area of the base. So in, in a sense, this is coming out, moving forward. We know that our slant height is 12. What's our perimeter going to be? 30. Because it's a hexagon with six sides, and each side is 5, so 6 times 5 is 30. Multiply this out, and our lateral area is 180. Did we have units? Yes. It's area, so area is measured in square units. So our lateral area is 180 centimeters squared. The last topic that we look at with surface area is surface area of cones. And here is a huge mathematical idea. And this mathematical idea is attributed to one of, of the greatest mathematicians that ever lived. His name was Archimedes. He lived about, ooh, I'm going to say, 200, 100, 200, 300 BC. And what Archimedes came up with was something that is sometimes called a method of exhaustion. Sounds like not a very th fun thing to do. Yeah. But the idea is, if you keep doing an idea forever, what does it become? So here's a pyramid. It's got a square base. Then I make it a hexagon, right? Six sides. Then one, two, three. I make it how many sides on this one? Twelve. Make it a dual decagon. Ooh. And then twenty-four sides would make it a twenty-four gone. <laughs> a 48 gone and a 96. He kept making them bigger and bigger and said, what happens if we just keep on adding more sides? What does it get closer and closer to? A circle. So if I know my formula for one thing, can I figure out my formula for another thing? So let's look at how we would calculate the lateral area we calculate the lateral area by doing one half times the slant height times the perimeter of the base. And that's true for each of these three. If we keep on going and we say, that should stay true no matter what I use, then the lateral area 
of my cone is going to be 1 half my slant height. And now what's the perimeter of my base? It's the circumference of my circle. So my lateral area will just be 1 half times my slant height times my circumference. And something pretty happens because the 1 half and the 2 are going to simplify. My lateral area just becomes pi r s. I think that's beautiful. But I'm a math guy, right? I like the idea that, oh, it's the same idea all the way through. Then to find the surface area, if we know the lateral area is pi r s, the surface area, which would include the area of the base, and we know the base is a circle, we just have to add the area of the circle on, which is pi r squared. Nice. And this one, surface area of the cone, is for sure on your formula sheet right now. So let's do a question with a cone. A right cone has a base of 4 meters and a height of 10. So practice drawing these. If you want a base of 4, you want to draw a circle that's kind of three-dimensional on a table. That turns it into an oval or an ellipse. <coughs> Take the center of that, okay? Label the fact that you know the radius is 4 meters. This is a pretty big cone. And then from that center, go straight up This is 4. That looks like that's close to being 10. 10 meters. Now, if you really wanted to give a sense of three dimensions to this, you could take out your razor and make this back line Dotted. I need a dot in there. there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh. More or less. That might give it uh, a sense of being more three dimensional. If you want to take out crayons, you could. Add some shading in there. Maybe that makes it look even more three-dimensional. But the key thing, you're drawing a circle as an oval to make it lie down, and then going from the center up. This is like art class and math class combined. So we've drawn our picture. We want to calculate the surface area. Well, we have our surface area formula, pi r s plus pi r squared. Do we know everything that we need for this question? No. No. What are we missing? Slant height. We're missing the slant height. So how am I going to figure out this slant height? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. I can, can you see this triangle here? I could pull out. I'll redraw it. It's a right angle triangle because the height is 10. The radius is 4. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. As you go further and further in math, you start to do this more and more in your head. Can you see that this side, can you in your head say, this is what I should type into my calculator? Yes? Because I did A squared, which is 100, plus B squared, which is 16, adds up to 116. That should equal C squared. 10.77. Now, even though it's 10.77, this is what I'm going to type into my calculator. I'm going to type in pi. I'm going to type in 4 for my radius. I'm going to type in the square root of 116 for s, plus pi, plus 
plus 4 squared. Take out my calculator. Why do I want to use the square root of 116? Because then I'm not rounding at all. And generally, we don't want to round until our final answer. So I can go pi radius was 4 square root of 116 plus pi r squared. So I typed it in exactly as I was seeing it, except the fact that, ooh, I made a little tiny mistake. Can you see the mistake that's in this typing? It's hard, a little bit hard to see. There's this bracket here needed to be outside of the square root. I'm not sure if that would really cause an error, but see how the size of the brackets on the calculator even help you tell which one closes with which? Oh, now I forgot the plus sign. Hey, have you ever had something that you typed in your calculator and go, oh, I got the plus sign, just like this. And you just retype the whole thing. Did you know there's shortcuts for not having to retype the whole thing? So, shortcut number one. And this will work if you have a TI-84 or a TI-83. Above the enter button is entry. If you push the second button and the entry button, it retypes what you typed last. If you do it again, it will retype what I had before. So if I did it again, it would do that one. If I did it again, it would do the one before. The other thing you can do, and this only works if you have the TI-84, is you can use your arrow key and highlight it and push enter, and it retypes what you had before. Now the problem is, is if you go back to where you needed the plus sign and push the plus sign, it just types over top. So in order to insert something above the delete button is INS, that is short for insert. Second, insert a plus sign. And 185.61 is our answer. So our surface area meters squared. So we have one more question. Okay, you just in the green, you can put it right in the green bin. Thank you so much. A model of the Great Pyramid of Giza is constructed for a museum display. And they decided not to construct the model as the actual size of the original one. The surface area of the triangular faces of the model is 3,000 inches squared. The side length of the base is 50 inches. Determine the height of the model. Okay, I am going to steal this picture. Over here. Okay. It's a little bit hard to see things, but we want to find out this height. We know that these sides are 50. I don't know if that helps or not. Kind of the way that it's drawn on the angle, it might have been easier to actually draw it more like that. So we're told the lateral area, and I'll label that LA, because the surface area of the triangular faces is 
3,000 inches squared. And this question, I do find that depending, sometimes in the English language, you might interpret this more than one way. So, how many people read the surface area of the triangular faces is 3,000 inches squared to include all four of them? And how many people read that as saying the sur surface area of the triangular faces is 3,000 inches, meaning that each of them is 3,000 inches? So you like, you like each of them? Or you like all? Can you see? It, it's a little bit ambiguous. It's a little bit unclear, wouldn't you agree? It would be nice um, if I was putting this on a quiz for you, I would try to be clear and say either the surface area of all triangular faces together is 3,000, then you would know it's lateral area. Or I would try to say the surface area of the triangular faces are each 3,000 inches squared, then you know that each one is 3,000. Let's do the question with a lateral area, okay? What does that mean one of the triangles is? Would be 750. So if we... So if we consider it to be all of them, one of the triangles is 750 inches squared. If we wanted to find the area of our triangle, okay, the area of one of those triangles, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to take it from here. Can you see on one of those triangles, this would be the slant height not the height. We have to be careful in a question with our variables because if we just, like our area of one is one half base times height, but in this case if I say h for height and I'm already using h for the height of my pyramid, then I'm talking about two different things in the same question. So we try to be clear that way that in this case when I'm talking about the area of one of my triangles, it has a base, which I know is equal to 50, and it has a slant height, not a height. And so if 750 is equal to 1 half the base, which we know is 50, and the height, which we know is actually the slant height, what we can solve for here is the slant height. So what would I do mathematically here? I might do the half times 50 first to get 25, then divide both sides by 25, and I get a slant height of 30 inches. Have we figured out the question yet? No. The question's asking us for the actual height. So now I have to go, and this is why we draw pictures, go back to my diagram and say, how could I now get my actual height? If I draw a dotted line here, can you see that the red line, the green line, and that dotted line make another right triangle? And with that right triangle, this is my height that I don't know. The slant height I just figured out to be 30. The dotted black line is going to be 25. Can you see that that dotted black line is half of the side length? It's going to be 25. Now we have to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared again because this is a right angle triangle. However, in this time, it is h squared plus 25 squared equals 30 squared. The thing that we don't know is on the left side of the equation because 
the c squared is always your hypotenuse. So we're going to have to do some 25 squared, 625. 30 squared, 900. Subtract that on both sides. And if, you, if I make a mental math error, please correct it. Square root of 275, 16.58. I guess technically, since I rounded, I should make this into an approximation sign. 16.58 inches.